<laughs> and old school gold found. Mr. Twister Blue Shad 6 inch slimy slug with a number two hook. Oh, son. Retro bassin, kicking some ass in wearing rayon jackets. Thinking about Bill Dance, watching these fish prance through my Ray-Ban glasses. Ain't nothing better than 40-year-old lures coming off of Zepco 33. Out on the bass boat, making beer cans float, doing some trespassing. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bassin'. Welcome to Retro Bassin. This episode is dedicated to all the Bassin Buds out there that ever leave a comment in the comment section. As someone who does a little bit of surfing on the old YouTube and drops a comment or two, I know that I'm always wondering whether or not the person that created the video even reads the comment, much less takes any action on it. Well, this episode, we are gonna prove just that. As you guys know, I am on a little bit of a tear when it comes to soft plastic jerk baits. Historically, one of my favorite baits to fish, starting with a sluggo, and if you just scroll through the old 1992 Bass Pro Shops catalog, just about everybody and their uncle had a version of that classic bait. There's a lot that I want to get to that I just don't happen to have in my arsenal yet, like the Man's Shadow and the Riverside Top Gun. Last week I did an episode on the Culprit Jerkworm, and we had a comment from one of the Bass and Buds that reminded me of another bait in that category that I had not fished with. All right, this comment comes from Chip, and by the way, I pinned it in the comment section of that video. Chip says, now I'm gonna have to find some jerk worms. Thanks a lot. I used to fish with another similar bait by Mr. Twister, the Slimy Slug. It had a straight tail that was different from the newer Exude version of the Slug. It had a great darting action that was, in my opinion, as good or better than any similar style bait. I like it as well as a sluggo and fluke. Too bad I only have a few of one color left and haven't seen any on eBay in a while. I only use it sparingly these days. Anyway, thanks for another great vid and be careful on those hook sets. So Chip, unfortunately I don't have any slimy slugs in my possession at the moment, but your comment got me doing a little bit of research both in my collection of vintage fishing tackle catalogs as well as something I might have seen on a recent stop at Jensen's Fishing Tackle in Austin, Texas. A few months ago I discovered Jensen's and I've been back probably a, a ton of times since and I'm pretty sure that I recall seeing some Mr. Twister slimy slugs on the rack at Jensen's. So today on Retro Bass and we're going to be heading to Jensen Fishing Tackle hopefully find some vintage, old school, <laughs> discontinued slimy slugs, and then take them on a local Texas lake to try to catch a bass or two. In the meantime, I do have this, which is a 1993 Mr. Twister fishing tackle guide, and it's got a great spread on the slimy slug that I will show you. So this is definitely one of the more obscure uh, soft plastic jerk baits that I recall from back in the day. And honestly, one that I've never actually seen or fished with. So let's read what it says about the old slimy slug. It says, a slimy slug lure is designed to imitate the erratic motions of an injured bait fish in distress. The large streamlined body glides smoothly, sinks slowly, and horizontally for a natural presentation, and the banana scent makes the lure even more attracting. Rig the slimy slug with a jerkbait hook into the slotted cavity as shown above. Using a gentle jerking motion during the retrieve, the slimy slug spins and erratically darts to create an injured bait fish action. With the attractive selection of colors, the slimy slug is effective for several species of fish. Available in a four inch size as well as the popular six inch version. So let's see what it says about this bait. Uh, it's got a injured bait fish action it's got a thick, supple body that glides smoothly, and a slotted cavity conceals the hook for weedless fishing. Oh, very cool. And here are some of the colors which you can get the slimy slug in. 
So I see Arkansas Shad, Chartreuse Shad, Strawberry. Oh, that's nice. Uh, pumpkin Red and Green Pepper. Louisiana Blue Shad. Ooh, that looks like that discontinued Smoke Blue from Sluggo. Oh, man, that's cool. Uh, natural Shad. Natural Wild Shiner. Red Shiner. And Rainbow Trout. So all in all, that looks pretty darn similar to a Sluggo. Man, I hope they still have some of these on the rack at Jensen's. And I also saw this was the uh, part of the Mr. Twister packaged fishing kits. Oh man, back in the day, you could have gotten the Slimy Slug kit. Oh man, that looks like a uh, fish catcher, doesn't it? Very cool. So by the way, I have been uh, talking to Terry over at Bass Fishing Archives, and I'm going to get him some high-res copies of this catalog to put up at Bass Fishing Archives. I'll go ahead and drop a link to that down below. By the way, if you've not been to Bass Fishing Archives in a hot minute, they are putting up some insanely awesome old-school stuff. I mean, you talk about the history that they drop on pretty much every single day, just pff, it's mind-blowing. I know we did like a full walkthrough of Jensen Fish and Tackle, but there was a ton that even I couldn't get to in that half an hour video. I recall they've got a ton of old school soft plastics. Some of it's so old that it's not even in the original packaging. I'm pretty sure that I saw a pack or two of vintage Mr. Twister slimy slugs. So I'm hoping they are still in the rack and we can grab a few and then get over to Bass Drop. So from the last time we were here, I remember there are like one or two rows dedicated specifically to soft plastics. So this row here, I think there's a ton of them from honestly this point all the way to the back wall. And then this row here as well. So we'll start on down here. We'll see what we can find. Hopefully that pack or two of slimy slugs is still here. All right, starting in the back of that row, this is not exactly what I was looking for, but it's pretty cool to see that <laughs> My soft plastic jerkbait journey can continue, honestly, probably indefinitely. So here are a bunch of old school bass assassins. Uh, this is the bass assassin 4.5 inch twitch in a smoke blue pepper. Ooh, that's a gorgeous color. That's more of a finesse bait. I'd probably have to throw that thing on a spinning rod. And what is this? Bass assassin charmer. Huh, what is a seven inch charmer yellow with black glitter. So that charmer almost looks like a mix between a floating worm and a soft plastic jerkbait. That's pretty wild and that is a gorgeous color. Oh man, um, that might have to come for a future episode even though today I've got my sight set on a different soft plastic bait. But that's a good looking floating worm. Ooh, what is this? Another seven inch charmer in a blue flash. Oh, sun. Yeah, that's probably coming too. <laughs> that's the trouble. I come here with like just one thing to buy and I'm probably gonna walk out with 30 pounds of soft plastics. <laughs> charmer in a white with black glitter. That's a rare color. You don't see that thing too often. Huh. And what color is this? Ooh, crystal shad. Oh yeah, buddy. Look at that. Oh, beautiful. All right, well, not exactly what we're looking for, but uh, I guess we'll take it. <laughs> okay, literally just across the aisle from the Charmers from Bass Assassin, we've got a mega collection of chatterboxes. Now, Bass and Buds, drop a comment down below if you know anything about this bait. This is a bait that I have heard of, I think, but I just don't recall a ton about. It looks a whole lot like a sluggo. It's got the two little channels there, sort of mid, uh, mid bait, where I guess you'd put a hook through. And it looks like, if I recall correctly, there's a little hole right there. And you're supposed to put some sort of rattle in that. Huh. That is a very sluggo looking soft plastic jerkbait. Again, not the one that I happen to be coming for today. <laughs> but smoking blue. Uh, <laughs> something's calling my name. 
So that's really cool. What other colors do they have of this bait? Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. This is a color you don't see a ton in a soft plastic jerk bait. Tequila Sunrise. And what I love about Jensen is some of this stuff is just so old. Literally just had to bag it themselves because I'm sure that either they bought it bulk, which is probably a good chance they did, or the original package is just disintegrated over time. Um, but that's a good looking bait. Tequila Sunrise, I might have to grab that one. So if I recall from last time, the Bass Assassins and the Chatterboxes are right in the back and the Mr. Twisters are right up here. <laughs> this is literally one of the most overwhelming selections of Mr. Twister baits I think I've ever seen. Uh, there is some stuff in here that I have long since forgotten about. And for me, <sighs> it's pretty impressive. So not exactly what we're looking for, but this is interesting. So I think Chip mentioned the uh, Exude Slugs and that's what this looks like. Looks like a bubblegum Mr. Twister slug. This is not the slimy slug, though. This is the newer version, which there's a variation of this one still available today. If you look at it, it looks a whole lot like a Zoom Super Fluke. It's got that fat belly to it and that really thin tail. A cool bait, but not what we're looking for. Okay, I think we're getting into a little closer uh, section. So we've got some Mr. Twister Phenom worms. Oh man, what a classic, classic bait. I remember this worm, I remember the woo worm, um, both of which I probably need to do a little episode on. More chunks, lizards. Ooh, interesting. The Mr. Twister super worm. It looks sort of like a floating worm and that's a good looking little color too, isn't it? Oh man. <laughs> and old school gold found mr twister blue shad six inch slimy slug with a number two hook oh son there we go <laughs> this has definitely been one of the harder baits to find i've been looking for this thing on ebay for a long long time and i haven't found it um chip buddy there's a couple on the rack i will leave them for you for sure um Check that out though. Oh man, that is awesome. <laughs> well, all right, Bass and Buds, we got enough old school plastic to choke a horse. Let's get on out to Bass Drop and see if we can get somebody to eat one of these slimy slugs. <laughs> This spot looks pretty fishy. And it is like a perfect, perfect day out. A little five mile an hour wind, overcast skies. I think there's like a high of 80 today. So, oof. Sun. This fish gotta be hungry. It is almost Thanksgiving time in Bassland, so these little dudes got, to, oh, there we go. Had a hit, had a hit, I knew it. I knew they'd be in here. Oh man, just missed it. Come on back and get it, come on get it. And he swiped at it. There we go. There's one. <laughs> he hit it and swam right at me. Come on, buddy. <laughs> oh, look at that dude. Oh, we got the first fish on the old Mr. Twister slimy slug. It's funny, but the fish have definitely been more active today. I've gotten a ton of hits the faster I fish this thing, but most of them have been swinging and a missing. Uh, this guy swung and then he chased it all the way to the boat. <laughs> Got him right in the top of the mouth. So there we are, nice little chunky uh, fall largemouth bass. You can tell by the belly on these guys. 
they are definitely feeding up in preparation for a little Thanksgiving. So that is awesome. <laughs> nice little fish there. It's sort of an interesting looking bass, isn't it? Little head, big belly. Oh my gosh, there he is, woohoo! Oh, that's a nice fish. Oh, stay pegged, baby. Stay pegged, woohoo! He was chasing it. Come on, buddy. Come on in here, ha <laughs> ha! That is how you get it done, son. Oh man, woo! Nice, nice little bass on the old Mr. Twister slimy slug. <laughs> that one was a total game of cat and mouse. I casted right up against these reeds with the old slimy slug and he started chasing it and missing it. And I just kept it up on top, kept flipping and flopping it my way and finally he got her. Woo, nice. <laughs> oh, so there we go. These bass are beautiful this time of year. Little heads, big bodies, man. Look at that. Woo. They are definitely stocking up for some colder weather. Uh, I guess it's all relative because it's like 80 today. Uh, but man, that was, uh, that was a nice little bass on the old slimy slug. Let's let it go. <laughs> all right, we'll take a little gear break here to look a little bit at both that slimy slug we're fishing today, do a little side by side with some of the soft plastic jerk baits that I've been fishing with as of late. And also, I do want to show you guys um, the combo that I've been throwing these baits on. It's probably something I don't talk enough about on this channel, and that is the old school rods and reels that I fish these old school baits on. One of the things I don't do on this channel enough is talk about the old school rods and reels uh, on which I fish a lot of these vintage baits. So this is the combo that I have been using for the past like two or three soft plastic jerk bait trips, and I am liking this combo a ton. The rod itself, it is a Shimano. It's called a Bass Stick, a medium action bass rod, uh, catalog number GL1552. It's a five foot six inch uh, rod rated for eight to 20 pound test. One quarter to three quarters of an ounce lure made in Japan. I like this rod a lot. This is just a one piece rod. It's got the old school uh, pistol grip and the nice little uh, <laughs> sort of screw handle there. It's actually a nice rod. It's got a pretty good backbone for setting the hook on these bass. The one trick is, and you guys have seen me miss a few fish, maybe more than a few fish on these baits. It's that five foot six inch that's really getting me. When I wasn't retro bass and pretty much every rod that I would throw would be a seven and a half foot plus. With a five foot six, you really have to be diligent about getting all the slack out of that line before you set the hook. Cause you just don't have a ton of leverage or hook setting power with something that short. Now the reel, this is, <laughs> I just love the iconic Abu Garcia look of these old ambassadors. And this is the ambassador 4500 C. Woo. <laughs> it's like a honey of a reel, especially for throwing these baits. Now you may have noticed, but it does not have the old uh, basically push button spool. You've got to put your thumb over to the side to cast her, but that's okay. Here's the bait we've been throwing today, and this is the Mr. Twister Slimy Slug. I'll try to say that three times fast. And thank you uh, to the Bass and Bud comment section for kind of putting me onto this lure. I hadn't thought about this lure in a number of years, and I vaguely remembered seeing it in a Mr. Twister catalog and also on the rack there at Jensen Tackle. I'm tying the line right to the hook itself, and I'm still using that Lunker City Tech Sposer hook. I like this hook a lot for these soft plastic jerk baits because it really does allow you to put that hook totally perpendicular to the bait. Now I did go down a size on the hook and it's sort of interesting. This is one of the longer baits that I've thrown, but it's definitely one of the more finesse which is a little bit surprising. So here's a slimy slug that is not rigged up. It's a pretty simple looking bait. 
normal straight tail, nothing funky going on, no sort of whale shaped tail or anything like that. The head itself, it's got a little bit of a pattern, I don't know if you can see an eye and a gill there, but just a little uh, sort of bait fish look to it. The top of the bait is pretty much flat, very similar to a sluggo, but it's got a hook slot in there, sort of like the jerk worm. So here is the old slimy slug next to a sluggo, and in sort of that similar color, by the way. And you can see the slimy slug is just a little bit longer. Side by side though, boy, those two look pretty similar. Next to the jerkworm, let's see. Um, so actually, look at that, it's actually just a hair longer than the jerkworm too, that's crazy. Um, and looking at the profile of the bait, that jerkworm definitely is a little bit wider and has a little bit more going on with the ribs and such. And then here are all three baits sort of side by side in, eh, <laughs> I would say all of them are sort of a flavor of smoke blue fleck, wouldn't you? And there's all three of those. So initial thoughts on the slimy slug. Well, these are some really old baits and they're a little bit stiff. To actually, Todd over at Bassin 101 did a really good video of how he boils his sluggos to get them to be a little bit more supple. And I think that that's probably what I would do with these. Some of these come out of the package and again, they've been in a bag for probably 20 plus years. They've got a little bit of a curve in them and I don't love that. So I might boil these to get them a little bit softer. It is definitely, I would say, the most finesse of the three soft plastic jerk baits that I've fished with in this genre. That's why I went with the lighter hook. It just doesn't have the basically water moving capability of those bigger baits, whether it's a sluggo or the jerkworm. I don't know why, but it just kind of tends to fish a little bit more uh, finesse for me. I was missing a few fish on this early on, and I think that had more to do with fish behavior than the lure itself. I had just had some fish that were aggressively hitting this thing, probably not getting a good set of lips on it, and they were just kind of chasing and swatting at it. Oh, there he is. Oh, there he is. Oh, he, he hit it right when it landed. <laughs> Another nice, oh wow, really nice fish. Really nice fish. Come here, buddy. Come here, buddy. <laughs> Ooh, there we go, look at that guy. That was crazy, he almost hit that right when it hit the water. Another really nice little bass. Whoo, getting ready for winter. <laughs> look at that guy, that's a nice little chunky November bass, isn't it? Oh man, that's really cool. Um, you know what, I'll pull the camera out of here, I will show you guys exactly where I got him. A lot of the fish in this lake generally relate to deeper vegetation, but as that's died off, I have found that this reed pattern has actually been pretty good. As you can see, we are just sort of drifting into the reeds here, and it's a mixture of, you've got some sort of walls of reeds, but then you've also got some nice little holes like this here. I am just basically drifting along these reed banks as best I can, not even using the trolling motor to be honest with you, and casting my soft plastic jerk baits into little holes like this. Now what's hard about it is these things are very catchy and if I even get a bait near here, um, that tech exposure hook tends to grab it and it kind of ruins my cast. But if I can find a nice dark little pocket like that, whew, that's where he came out of too. Well Bass and Buds, hopefully you enjoyed our little venture into a soft plastic jerkbait obscurity. Drop a comment down below, let me know what soft plastic bait you want me to fish with next. Until next time, Bass and Buds, keep the carpet side up, and definitely, fish it old school. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bassin'.